Hi, my name is Jen Buck. I'm a technology education teacher here at Kikalico. If you are watching this video, it is because I have either your son or daughter in one of my three classes. The three classes that I teach this semester are Yearbook, Exploring Technology, and Digital Photography. Let me begin by telling you a little bit about myself. I've been teaching for 30 years, and for 29 of them I have been with Kikalico School District. And it just so happens that come June, I will be retiring and starting a new and very welcome chapter in my life. My original degree was from a small school in Idaho where I received a degree in theater. I earned two of my other degrees at Millersville University. My original Millersville degree was in broadcast communications and had a minor in public relations and photography. My teaching certification also came from MU, and it was in technology education. I have taught a variety of classes here at Kikalico. Not only the three that I just mentioned, but I've taught digital communications, digital design, TV production, wood technology, and digital design and print media. My emphasis when I was in college was graphic arts and photography when I was working on my technology education degree. My first class of the day starts with yearbook. Yearbook class is where students go above and beyond. It is a class that basically is a $60,000 a year business. It is completely student run. I teach the students the basics in design and photography and the program that they need to use to lay out the yearbook. And then they run with it. They spend time over the summer coming to my workshop and training. And if you're an editor, you get to go to Gettysburg College for three and a half days for a workshop that is actually run by Jostens. These kids are dedicated. I have an editor in chief, two section editors, a copy editor, and a photo editor. And then there's my business manager. I would have to say that the most rewarding thing that I experience each year is to watch my yearbook students start with an idea or a concept, develop that concept, and then run with it and complete a book from start to finish. And their end result is a published 222 page book Students take 99% of the photos, do 100% of the layout, and work together as a team. There are very few students who can claim that as a high school student, they've published a book. And it is no easy feat. Our yearbook is 222 pages long, as I said before. These students are so dedicated, they put in extra hours going to games and out of school activities, trainings, and workshops. They take care of everything that has to do with the money. These are just a few things that people take for granted and don't really see when they see the pictures in the yearbook. One thing as a parent you should be aware of is they have a daily log sheet that needs to be handed in each Friday. Um, if it's not received on Friday, it's considered late and I don't accept it. Their other grades are a combination of whether or not they make their deadlines. All of their deadlines are set by Jostens and they have to be in on time. If they're not, we miss our point in line and it can push our distribution date back. So they learn very quickly that a deadline is a deadline. And that also goes for those weekly journals. Uh, my exploring technology class is just that. It's an exploration class in some of the different classes in our department. Um, it's a very small class and this year we are going to be delving into the areas of screen printing where students are going to be creating, designing, and screen printing a two-colored t-shirt. They're going to be doing some vinyl cutting. Um, they're going to do a series of stickers, both removable stickers and permanent stickers. Removable stickers would be like window stickers or something that you put on a wall that you can take off. Um, and the permanent stickers are something that would go on a mug or um, 
something that you don't want the sticker to come off of. They are also going to be doing a an iron-on vinyl on t-shirt. They will also be exploring wood tech. And in wood tech, they're going to be making bluebird boxes. They're going to start with doing some of the research on the box, which means they're going to have to research the bird, um, do a little bit of research as to their habitat, where the bluebird boxes need to be placed once they're completed, and then we'll go into the wood shop and we will start with a review and learning the machines, and then from there we will cut out all the pieces and they will assemble these bluebird boxes. Finally, my digital photography class is just that. It's a class where students take pictures with a digital camera. They also learn how to use Photoshop. In learning digital photography and Photoshop, we delve into the nitty gritty of both, probably learning more about the technical end of those things than they want to. Most students nowadays aren't interested in the technical end. They just want to go out with a cell phone, snap selfies, or take pictures of their friends and upload them to Instagram. This is going to be a bit of a different experience for them. They're going to be using the digital SLR cameras that we have here in the room. No parents. You do not need to go out and buy them a new camera. Um, they will have eight out-of-class activities, but one of those out-of-class activities is done here in the room. We have a small studio that is set up with lights, um, and it will be done here, but it is considered an out-of-class project. Um, in that small studio, we have a lot of professional lighting. We've got backdrops, um, soft boxes that can be used to photograph things that might be put on eBay, that type of thing. Um, students can also use the studio to do their portrait assignment if that's what they choose. So they may be able to get in there twice. Out-of-class projects, if they are not handed in by the due date, which is always on a Friday, um, which means the pictures have to be handed in to me by Thursday so that I can get them printed. And then Friday they will spend matting and mounting them and getting a copy of it to put in their portfolio. Um, but if they are not handed in by the due date, they can only receive a 65% on it. Other activities or class projects can be handed in without a penalty at any point during the semester. However, at some point I do say to them, you have work that needs to be completed and submitted and I will give them a date and tell them that if the work's not handed in to me by that date, then it will be considered late and there will be a penalty as far as their grade goes. There's also four class projects that they're going to be do, doing using Photoshop. Those projects include um, creating a 12-month calendar, a collage, a greeting card, and a magazine cover. Um, digital photography also has a weekly journal that needs to be completed and handed in to me by the end of the day on Friday. It is um, it's submitted to me electronically and it is one thing that I will not accept late. And the reason I don't accept it late is because the end of next week or two weeks from now, they're not going to remember what it was that they did this week. So I tell them that they should stop about 10 minutes early, the end of class, and just fill out a list. It can be bullet point. Um, and just let me know what you did, how you did what you did, what problems you had, how did you solve those problems. Um, it's really important. I have 18 kids in that class and to get around to each of them to see exactly what it is they're doing is almost impossible. So I read these journals and they get credit for them. They're 15 points apiece and they're the easiest 15 points that they will get in the class as long as they're handed in on time. So that's pretty much all I have. 
If you want to get in touch with me or you ever need to get in touch with me, you can contact me through my school email, which is jbuck at cacalago.org, or you can contact me through the office. And the phone number for the office is 336-1423. Um, they will put you through to my voicemail. However, if you don't hear from me within 24 hours, please call again and leave another message. In the past, I've had some issues with messages not recording when parents call to leave them, and then they think that I'm ignoring them. Um, I always try and call as soon as I get a voicemail, um, or at least that day. So I just want to thank everybody for listening, and again, if you need to get in touch with me, um, you have my contact information. Have a great night.